Hey, what's going on guys? I want to do another Wild Edibles video. I just recently made a new discovery for Wild Edibles, which is really cool. And I wanted to share with you guys. It's all about learning together. You know, I'm constantly learning about things. I'm not an expert in Wild Edibles, but it's really fascinating to me. Of course, it's a very, a potentially dangerous venture if you don't know what you're doing. So you have to really study, 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 get all the knowledge you can, talk to other people, you know, get knowledge from different sources before you really just eat something from the wild. Obviously, there's a lot of poisonous things out there. There's a lot of things you can get reactions from and get sick from, especially when you're dealing with wild edibles. Um, you may have allergies to things you don't even know about because you've never had them before. So just be very, very cautious when you're doing stuff like this. And if you are really in the wild, it's best to pick things and bring them back and actually taste them. If you're doing something for the first time and taste them, close by your home or close by a hospital really in case you need to go to er or something from an allergic reaction you don't want to literally be out in the woods you know with a, a four-hour hike or something back to civilization you really want to just test these things in a safer environment but you don't randomly test things you kind of just you know you know you have to know what you're doing i know this seems like a waste of talk and a waste of time but it's very important to me to know that anyone watching the videos aren't just randomly eating things that you do know how dangerous this could possibly be regardless <laughs> i'm making a video on it um, this is something I recently discovered. This is a Kusa dogwood tree. Now, I'm extremely familiar with the Kusa dogwood tree uh, in the past as an ornamental landscaping type tree. You see them everywhere. They have beautiful white flowers. They open up really nice. It's great for landscaping. You see them all the time at the tree places if you're looking to uh, you know, do landscaping for your yards. You also see these in a lot of public areas. You see them by malls and stuff like that because it's such a beautiful looking tree. Now, my entire life, being in Jersey and being in Pennsylvania thus far, I've always seen these trees and basically they have these nice big white flowers and when they drop off when it gets cold out like now usually they'll have these tiny little kind of whitish or green uh, clusters and it's it's really like a little ball it kind of reminds me of like a golf ball but instead of the divots they're actually little like kind of spikes or bumps on them and I really never gave it much thought I never actually thought that that was a wild edible it just looked like something that you wouldn't want to eat and I've actually looked at them before and they're nice and hard and small and I've opened them up and I'm like yeah I don't think you can eat this but I never really did the research on it what kind of made me discover this now and the reason I'm doing this video now is because this fruit has actually ripened the reason that I'm actually looking at nice rich red ripe fruit on here which is edible I'll pick one of these off to show you is because there's no squirrels in this area there's plenty of birds and stuff but where I live all the squirrels and chipmunks, they eat this stuff way before it even gets red like this. This is a nice red piece of fruit from a Kusa dogwood tree, but I never knew this existed because I never seen it in this stage because the wildlife by me never gave it a chance to actually get like this. Anyway, I just wanted to read uh, an excerpt from this book. Now, I've talked about this book in the past. This is my favorite book on wild edibles and stuff. It's Identifying Harvesting Wild uh, Edibles and Medicinal Plants. And this is by wild man Steve Brill and also uh, Evelyn Dean uh, did all the illustrations in this book. This is probably one of the most comprehensive book for wild edible stuff. I've talked about this in the past, but if you knew the channel, you haven't seen this. This covers pretty much everything you can imagine. So here's what they have to say about the dogwood. You can find this small Asian dogwood tree bearing fruit when it's about eight feet tall. Although it can reach 30 feet in height, the coarsely toothed opposite leaves are narrowly heart-shaped about four inches long, not unlike many other dogwoods, but the molted brown and Otcher bark patches are more distinctive. The flowers will appear from late spring to early summer, superficially resembling other dogwoods with four showy sepals acting like petals. But in the flower center, there's a green warty ball smaller than a pea. In early summer, tiny inconspicuous white flowers with four petals erupt from the warts, then disappear. The sepals fall off and the ball enlarges to a size of a table tennis ball. Uh, it's red and still warty, softening as it ripens. Now each ward is hard rice-sized seeds. So let me grab another little specimen here off the tray. I'll show you this. So this one's fully ripened. But basically, when these are flowering, this is a tiny little green thing, which is smaller than a pea. And then uh, obviously the leaves fall back, and then this starts to ripen and enlarge. Let's see. Thanks to landscapers' relentless effort to fill America with foreign plants, this tree now provides us with exotic fruit virtually anywhere in the country. Uh, I see it cultivated er in areas such as parks, botanical gardens, and uh, household areas. I've even found it in front of private homes where homeowners are usually uh, astonished when I ask permission to gather the fruit. Landscapers never tell them it's edible. This is one of the strangest looking fruits you'll ever see. 
and I was reluctant to try it for years. Finally, a Japanese TV crew putting together a documentary about me gave me these Japanese foraging books as a gift. I learned the Japanese had been eating this fruit for centuries. The fruit's quality varies from tree to tree. Sometimes it tastes like a, a less sweet combination of mango and apricot. Other times it's unpleasantly bitter. Trees with large fruit are often the best. Look for the ripe fruit at the end of the summer and in the fall. And he goes on to say that he's uh, tried cooking the fruit, but it's best eaten raw. So let's take a closer look at this. I'm actually going to take you off the tripod for a second because there's a few Kusadogwits here and they're all ripening. And I'm particularly lucky in this area just because of the fact that there's, there's really not a lot of squirrels and that's what usually eats these things. So, I mean, this tree's probably, they say they grow about eight feet tall, but this, I would have to imagine 14, 15 feet. I mean, it's a very large tree and there's got to be four or five pounds of this fruit all over it. Here's a close-up of it. You see it's very distinctive, nice big red. Here's a, a shot of the, the leaves. Very distinctive as well. As they come across here, we'll see there's more. Here's a nice one. It's all open, tons and tons of fruit. These ones aren't quite as ripe. You anyway, know, I grabbed the real good one to give you a comparison to show you with this other tree here. I'll bring this down. You can see the one in my hand is ripe. All these slightly smaller, they're not quite as red. I don't know if you could tell, but it's it's uh, slightly yellowy, kind of orangey. But uh, there's probably, I want to say six trees here. There's another one completely filled with fruit. I mean, it's all over the place. Here's a specimen that's not quite even getting ripe. You can see the color difference and size difference. And it's much harder, it's denser. When you squeeze this, it, it almost feels like uh, an acorn. And then this, of course, the ripened fruit gives a lot it's very squishy all right i just want to get in front of the camera here to show you a ripened one and show you how to eat it um, like i mentioned a lot of people who and all the things i've read about this so far no one really eats this cooked when you cook it it brings out a very strong bitter taste so it's best eaten raw now i believe the skin is edible but it has a very rough texture um when you chew it it's almost like imagine like a grape skin but not quite as soft almost like um like a leathery grape skin. Uh, I, I discard the skin. But anyway, once you break it open, there's lots of little seeds in it. You can see here, it's got, it's kind of like a pulp. It smells, this particular one smells exactly like a fresh peach, if you were to cut open a peach. And it has a consistency of like the bruised part of peaches, you know, or any kind of fruit. If you have a piece of fruit and it's bruised, you know how it's like kind of mushy, it's almost like custard. But here's the inside that's all edible fruit right there. And the seeds, let me see. Hmm. This one happens to be good. Some, of, I mean, every single tree, the flavor is a little bit different. I've tried one from each one of these trees, and each one is completely different. It, it ranges for me to like banana tasting, to mango, to peach, nectarine, stuff like that. It's it's pretty diverse and wide. And one of the trees here, it didn't taste good at all. So it really is kind of random. But I, I want to show you one of the seeds here. Give you an idea what they look like. And the fruit is basically all around the seeds. So here's one of the little seeds, which I'll throw down over there to grow a new tree, hopefully. But it's all mixed in with this mushy fruit. So basically, you kind of break it open, you take a bunch of fruit in your mouth, and you spit the seeds out as you're eating them. So that's pretty much it. Um, you're just eating the fruit around the seed and then discarding the seed and the skins. I know the skins are edible, but I don't eat them because they're too, they're too tough. There might be some kind of nutritional value in them. I didn't read anything about that specifically, but I'm sure you can do more research and see if the skins are more beneficial if you were like in a real survival situation. Just a quick note on the Kusa dogwood is you're probably going to find this in cultivated areas as opposed to being out in the middle of the woods. So this type of knowledge, as far as knowing this fruit is edible, uh, might be better suited for an SHTF type situation where if no one's around, maybe you can go to like a mall area or people's landscaping and you might find these trees much more prevalent there as opposed to out in the middle of nowhere. But knowledge is power and it's good to be diverse and know little things about, you know, all kinds of stuff. So I thought this was really interesting. Like I said, I've, I see tons and tons of Kusa dogwoods everywhere, but I've never actually seen the fruit ripen completely because of all the squirrel population and all the chipmunk population. So they get to these things probably when they're much smaller, like this. And be honest, I never even seen them this big or this red. Usually I'll take note when they're small and hard and green and yellow, and then they disappear. But now, duh, I realize why they disappear. I thought maybe they were dropping, you know, for seeds or something, but no, the animals are eating them because it's delicious fruit. But anyway, 
just want to do a little video on that. I thought it was really interesting. So once again, here's a, a ripe one on the leaves so you could see it. That is the Kusa Dogwood. And it is an interesting, exotic, edible fruit. So hopefully this video is interesting. Appreciate your time as always. And I hope you guys enjoy the rest of your day. Take care.